All right. I think we're live. Greetings. How's it going? Just uh, warming up here. Warming up is in waking up, I think is actually what I mean. <laughs> uh, yes, Sunday. Tree robot, yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe there's some robot gunk inside of it. It's a tree surrounded, it's robot parts surrounded by uh, uh, tree roots. We can invent what's inside of it. Hello, hey. Happy Sunday, everybody. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, we're going to spend um, uh, today in ZBrush again, but um, I wanted to start off a little bit just by looking. Actually, uh, I was going to say I was hoping to have spent some time, a little bit of time, on the uh, the tree, our tree creation during the week to clean it up a little bit, just so you wouldn't have to see so much painfully slow sculpting, but I didn't have a chance. And the reason why I didn't have a chance, hey everybody, thank you for joining. Uh, the reason why I didn't have a chance, just so you don't think I'm completely and totally lazy, was I was fishing up this piece here, which was the last piece I was doing in the previous series I was working on. So I finished that up during the week um, instead of working on that. Um, so I thought maybe I'd just spend a few minutes to kind of go over that just so you, if you were interested to sort of see how I put that together But then we'll get back on to sculpting our tree character um, uh, So yeah, it's you know, it's a painting it involved uh, some ZBrush some blender and some Photoshop um, But just to sort of show you that like the I didn't do a ton in ZBrush. I did sculpt. This is the character I sculpted for it in ZBrush um, You can see you get a layer. It's a pretty simple sculpt uh, has some uh, weird veiny hand things that don't really look like hands in the final painting. You know, it really wasn't that important. It was just something I was enjoying doing was kind of creating these like wrapped arm shapes that kind of look like rocks, um, if you will. And then let me render it here real quick. You can see little shadows on it. Sort of how it turned out, but it does have like a whole row of extra teeth up in there. Again, not super visible in the final image. The image wasn't just about the details, but I, you know, you can't help. One cannot help oneself. Uh, and then actual image, uh, here's what the actual image, the final image look like. Um, and I did, I did take that stuff into Blender and did some rendering in Blender. And I did a little bit of painting here so I could show you a little bit like, so this is one of the, like the render, let me get a little closer. This is kind of the render straight out of Blender. Um, I didn't do any UVs or textures for this. This is some vert colors I baked out of it uh, in, uh, in ZBrush and um, this was a model I previously created for the series. Um, and these are, believe it or not, these are priest characters. Uh, and I have scattered, I think, 3,000 of them over the landscapes. <laughs> there are these little tiny figures all everywhere, which, you know, like no one can really tell what they are. But they're just there for, for like, scale and stuff. And so uh, this, I rendered it out this way. Uh, I actually have, you can sort of see I painted on the thing a bit to do some edge work here. Um, you can sort of see it go in and out. And then uh, a little bit, let me zoom out again. And then a little bit of... Um, a little bit of uh, darkening in here. And then I did render out this with bounce lighting and I'm only using a little bit of it on the edges here. I didn't really want it to be too dominant because you know there's these huge things in the sky and if the light is scattering too much, it kind of works against the sense of scale. So, but just so you could see what this whole pass looked like, if I rendered it, that was like a pass where I really exaggerated rim lighting. But rather than try and get it exactly perfect to one go, I just basically rendered that out and separate and masked it in where I wanted it aesthetically. Um, and uh, you know, so a lot of these passes are just uh, bringing some of that in, um, some of the detail I wanted in uh, a little bit. So let's see if we get a little closer here on this image here. Um, yeah, so this is some ambient occlusion pass that I brought back in to store a little bit of uh, detail in here because I didn't really do any detailed material. So I just wanted to have a little bit in here. And uh, what do we got here? A little more darkening. Um, back up a little bit. And then I like to just paint lighting into. So I just, this lighting here, which I could have done in 3D, but it's really easy for me to do in 2D. I just wanted a little bit of top-down illumination as if maybe some light was scattering through the atmosphere, even though it's obviously being lit strongly by the sun behind it. Uh, and then let's see me back. What did I add? I painted in some low red clouds down there in the horizon. Just wanted some more light scattering down there. 
and uh, I don't know what that is. That was an experiment I didn't go for. And then, yeah, I just painted a few more clouds in here to add a little more atmosphere, just to get a little more um, depth. And then just, uh, you know, some noise on top, just to kind of break it up, a little vignette to darken it, keep the eye from going to the edges as much, and that's pretty much it. So this one had um, probably less painting than we're gonna do on our other one, because I think, I think for this piece here, I just want to do a little more painting. We could certainly spend more time, but I'll probably I'll probably just render it directly out of ZBrush and bring it in. We probably won't go through Blender or anything, and then I'll just paint all that in. But we'll see. We'll see how it looks as it's going along. So, um, if you're interested in seeing more of uh, more of this series, I do have them. I do have them all posted either on my art station or my website. If you're curious. Um, uh, there's 12 total, and maybe I'll come back to it at some point. But, you know, I've been sketching some other things in my sketchbook, um, which my sketchbook looks terrible, by the way. I'm a terrible sketch artist because I just make notes to myself. But let me grab it real quick. All right. So, um, yeah, so let's see. So um, we're working on this tree piece, but then I started thinking about all sorts of other tree things. I'll show you this. I don't know if I showed this last week or not, but you can sort of see uh, these are my scribbles here, and there's there's a few things in it that are just kind of like uh, little sketchy bits with trees and um, kind of halfway between tree wizards. I have sketching some more tree wizards. So I have some. Um, here's another one. Here's another one here, uh, which is like this weird multi-headed, uh, upside down headed giant. Uh, <laughs> tree entity interacting and then I have uh, let's see what else did I sketch I sketched a few other ideas in here um, is this one so uh, I don't know yeah I might just start off instead of making it so environment art centric just maybe doing more character studies in uh, ZBrush and, and VR I think I'll do some VR sculpting that are just kind of um, yeah, here's one more here's one more that are just kind of like these weird uh, conjoin tree entities. And some people just do a, a few that are kind of more character focused and uh, then uh, then you know I can maybe think about bringing them into a world just to kind of mix it up a little different from like this last series which was so environment focused. Maybe even a little more character focused stuff. But uh, anyways, thanks for <laughs> thanks for looking at that stuff. Um, it's pretty been pretty fun to do it but I kind of want to do some new things. And um, I, I guess there's two things that are competing in my mind that I want to tackle. Um, I also want to kind of work on, um, I kind of want to get back to Unreal too. So I kind of actually want to make some things in Unreal that we can kind of um, explore a little bit. Um, and uh, so I kind of want to use that as a concept art tool. I don't know, I'm, I'm conflicted, but I also want to get back to doing some VR sculpting because it's been a while and VR sculpting is really fun. So, yeah, I think maybe once we finish this piece, I'll kind of tackle that. But we're going to go through the whole process on this piece um, first. Yeah, I love looking at people's sketchbooks, too. I feel, I feel, very, uh, I feel a little self-conscious about mine because they're really rough. And for me, they're just as much about notes. You know, like they're not, they're not like, I, how should I say it? They're just like shorthand for ideas more than they are like actually doing visual iteration and, and design. I'll tend to do that, you know, as a separate step outside of the sketchbook. Uh, so, you know, they look, uh, <laughs> they just look like the, you know, Mad Men stuff. But anyways, um, but I do, I do like drawing in them. They're useful. So, uh, messed with the sculpting tools in Blender. So I have done a few things in Blender, um, in the, there have been a lot of changes to them and I haven't yet kind of buckled down and learned them, but maybe it would be a good thing to do. Uh, I do use them a little bit, um, when I'm doing kind of rough, uh, rough things. I tend to actually use, in Blender, I tend to like, when I'm kind of just roughing in designs, I tend to like to use things like uh, quick shape and quick curve and things like that in the voxel remesh more than sitting down and sculpting stuff. Um, but I probably should. ZBrush just has so much more in it that I tend to like want to go back into to ZBrush. And, it, and Blender sculpting tools used to have a lot of performance issues for dense mesh, but they're a lot better now. And they, they're keep, like Blender's amazing. They keep adding more and more stuff. So I probably should spend more time in that. But as it is, I feel like I flit around with so many tools that I never really <laughs> quite get it very good at any of them. But uh, yeah, such such is, a, is my life. Um, 
but yes, so we're going to work on this today. And, and just to kind of um, go over where we were on it, I don't know if you remember, but you know, this is supposed to be a companion piece to an existing, an older piece. So I have, um, let me open that piece here real quick, just to, um, just to show it. And then we'll get right into it. So this piece, yeah, so this, this is going to eventually be a companion piece to this. So, you know, this is uh, an older piece I did a couple years ago. Oops. And this piece was done, um, we'll probably use slightly different tools. This piece was done originally in VR, and then I think I rendered it using Marmus at Toolbag, which I'm not going to go and use for this. And then I did some painting on it in Photoshop. So we'll kind of be doing the same sort of thing, but and they'll kind of wind up sitting together like this probably. So we'll see where it goes. Um, but the actual um, sculpt itself, let me open that so I can show you where we're at. <clears throat> we are rewired. So this one, I started a little differently than I normally would. Like normally I probably would, um, so this is kind of where we're at right now. Normally I, you know, we, we sculpted this last time a bit and um, I think normally when I'm, I'm doing something that's intended for painting, you know, I'm not worried so much about, of course, topology and everything, which, which I'm not really for this either. But I think the one difference is this thing, because I reuse that existing mesh as a starting point, it's a little, um, it's a little more combined than I normally do. I normally have things busted out into a lot more separate sub tools just to make this early sculpting process a little faster and easier. And, and I do have some separate sub tools. It's real obvious if I turn this on, you can see I can jump between these different sub tools. So they're not all like combined into one thing, but they're not as separated as they otherwise might be. Like these head horns, I really shouldn't have just sculpted this thing all together. And, and I will go back and separate those when I do another detail pass, um, just because it just makes it so much easier to manipulate. And you can combine them later if you want to smooth them out. But that's just a, uh, <laughs> just a tip if you're actually, especially if you're doing conceptual design, you can just have a billion sub tools on here. And you don't really need to navigate this panel you can just, uh, much like in Photoshop, you can just kind of alt click on a layer and it'll switch. So it's a much easier way of working. Um, again, I'm thinking more about conceptual uh, use of sculpts more than, you know, if you're trying to make really clean results, you'll have to definitely clean that up. But we are not doing that. Uh, so what I'm going to do today, I think, is so we, we did a little work on the face and neck and head. Um, we kind of got that into a little bit better shape. There's obviously a lot of detail missing on all those. But my, my first goal is just to kind of get a pass on everything and get it closer. So uh, I think what I'm going to tackle today is perhaps this main uh, pipe here and this area up here. Because if you look at the concept, which which I'll have parked off to the side for myself. But, you know, I have this kind of skull mouthy sort of thing up here. And the way this kind of wraps will be good visual language to figure out. So I think I'm gonna, um, I think I'm going to work on that today. Uh, so yeah, let me, I'm gonna close Photoshop, and then I'm gonna get over here. Let's open that thing back up. I can see it a little bit off to the side. I'm not, I'm not, you know, again, these are kind of more exploration based things. So I'm not, I'm not following the design super closely necessarily. So, um, yeah. So how is everyone doing today? Any, you guys working on anything cool? Anything neat? You're learning ZBrush. I'm sorry. <laughs> ZBrush is, um, you know, I, I think everyone likes to trash talk ZBrush a little bit because uh, the the interface is so uh, unusual, I guess we'll say. But it really is, it really is a super incredibly deep tool um, that has a lot of stuff in it that uh, nothing else really does. Um, so, you know. Uh, I wish the UX was maybe a little closer to some other things, but it is learnable and it is true. Like some people who don't, maybe don't use a lot of other 3D apps find it more intuitive. I just have a hard time imagining that myself, <laughs> but uh, it is good. It is good. Uh, how to learn ZBrush is an interesting question. I don't know. Like my, 
Um, Pixelogic, the makers of ZBrush, uh, put a lot of um, uh, free videos out. So um, you can check those out. They're all online. Um, those are useful, I think. They go over a lot of the basics. Working on some emotes for my husband's tweet. Oh, awesome. Cool. Neon color study. What are you doing your neon color study? And are you using, you, use, you like Copics, right? We were talking about it last time. You like using markers a lot? Are you doing the, your neon color studies in, in Copics? Copics, however it said. Nice. Yeah, I was. I've been, I, I really like them. I use Posca markers a lot for my sketchbook because they're so super opaque. I can just like scumble over lines and stuff, and it, it's really nice for just that sort of concept exploration. <laughs> yes, uh, I remember you talking last time about uh, your work and the stuff you do, and we were like, oh yeah, you know, it's very easy, right? <laughs> that sounds amazing. All right, what am I doing now? Okay, I'm gonna. Um, I'm going to try and make this look more like a tree branch and less like a cluster of wires. So we're going to, we're just going to hide everything. And probably one of the easiest ways to do that is just to smooth it initially. And then, um, then we're going to pull it around. So I'm just going to smooth out a lot of the stuff. We're going to, we're going to be left with a bunch of artifacts because I had a whole lot of wires baked in. I should probably turn on symmetry, shouldn't I? I had a whole lot of wires baked in here. Um, so, uh, you know, we're going to have some artifacts in here. But I will say that I think for conceptual work, sometimes those artifacts are really fun. Like they're gonna be some happy accidents in there that you might get to. So uh, I, I don't mind that sort of mess for this sort of work. Um, so we're just kind of smoothing it over. And then what I might do is I might just go ahead and try and dynamesh it and see if we can get rid of a little bit of that. Let's see, we're pretty dense though. I might have to lower the resolution to kind of yeah, it's kind of an unusual, um, let me undo that for a sec. It's kind of an unusual workflow um, for me anyways, just because normally I don't have this much of a starting point. And I like to kind of like not be super high res when I'm first pulling shapes around. So it's maybe a little lower than I want. So uh, might be all right. See, so when it gets low, lower like this, you can kind of easily, it's a little easier to kind of get rid of some of these little bits. Of course, I lose some stuff I like too, so it's kind of a, kind of a mix. All right, we'll see. Uh, all right, so let me get some better gesture on this thing. Um, I like using the snake hook brush a lot for that. You guys have never used that. A lot of people use the move brush, but the snake hook brush is kind of like it's kind of like a slightly less controllable, but more gesture oriented move brush, I think for, if you use it that way, which I like to do. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of some of this focal shift so it's a little harder edged. And you can kind of be a little more, actually, you know what? I actually want more of that, sorry, other way around. I don't know that there's a lot I'm doing with it right at this point. I'm just kind of, like the gesture, I don't want to get too far from the original because I still want them to sit, sit together as a diptych. So I just mainly, I want to get more, a little more natural sag. Got to have some sag, some gravity. Which one could do a bunch of procedural ways, but I don't want to. And then my um, favorite brush for blocking and shapes, which a lot of artists use clay buildup or clay tubes. Uh, so those are great because they're just like these big kind of messy ones, but they're great because um, they do feel a little bit like working with clay, like in the sense that they kind of almost like adding a layer on. Um, this is pretty low res. So I'm gonna, I'll probably wind up up resing it pretty soon, but I just want to get, just kind of want to get a little more flow in there, kind of looking at my concept piece. I don't want to follow the concept too closely though. That's my day job. <laughs> the art direct myself. I 
the main art tools we use at Double Fine, um, we, um, we use pretty industry standard stuff at this point. So Maya is the main 3D tool that we use. Um, there are artists who use Blender as part of their workflow, but the main tools is Maya. Part of that's because we have a lot of custom tools in it um, that are a little harder to, um, would be a little harder to, to adopt uh, or to get away from um, at this point. I'm just making this more symmetrical. Um, but, I'm sorry, we have so much on there. Um, but uh, we also, uh, so we use that for our main 3D tool um, because, you know, we have a lot of animation and so, uh, in our games, a lot of character animation. So, you know, Maya has its faults, but but perhaps its biggest strength, one might argue, is its animation stuff. So that is that is why we use it that, uh, as well as being a legacy tool. We use Unreal 4 as our main engine. Uh, we use Substance Painter and Designer for our main texturing tools, and of course, Photoshop. Um, those are the main tools, and those are NZ Brush, of course. So those are kind of the industry standard at this point, you know, so. Sketchy rip, the ribs, little ribbies. Um, yeah. There's some, look, at there's some dangling polygons right here. I don't know what those are for some old wires or something. We'll recreate any wires we need. It can be fun. So another, uh, I don't necessarily do this technique a lot in here. I use this technique a lot in VR. Another thing you can do is just kind of an, a pinned a sphere and distort it with snake hook and then you can merge it in. And that's another sort of cool way to get some stuff. So I'm gonna show you that a little bit. So let's say I want, um, I just wanna get like a little more of a twisting shape in here. I could go and sculpt that pretty easily, but I could also, let's make sure we're in the right tool. So what you can do is you could just go in, um, uh, do, do you can just go into pin, you can just grab a sphere, which, okay, so, <laughs> Uh, because this uh, source sculpt originally came from VR, it has not been set to be in ZBrush scale, which again is something I really probably should have done off stream to clean this up a little bit, because it means you know like anything comes in by default the wrong scale and symmetry's off and all that. But that's fine; it doesn't really matter too much. But just so <laughs> normally when you append to a tool, it's not like ridiculous. And you see, this is actually where the center of the world is, so it just makes uh, it just makes dealing with symmetry and that sort of stuff a little more challenging. Okay, so um, we have this sort of sphere here, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to sculpting it and um, the, st the stringy part. Not cool. I like stringy parts. That sounds terrible. You know what I mean. All right, I'm actually gonna take this guy and I'm just gonna move it down for the minute just to make this a little easier. See, I have a lot of like random little garbage sub tools in here I probably should combine, but all right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, you know, I'll just leave them all visible for the moment. Okay, so um, yeah, let's grab our snake hook. And we're not, I, I can turn on Dynamesh, but I'm not worried about it right at the moment. So you can, you know, you can kind of get in here. I don't even have symmetry on at the moment. And you can kind of just start deforming this in to flow. And one of the things you might want to do too is turn on, um, AccuCurve is in, a br in the brush panel normally, but it, it lets you kind of get a little more, mm, it changes the character. It's not necessarily more, it is more accurate, but it's not necessarily always desirable how I say that. But it does let you kind of get more of a, see how I can kind of get a, a circle back shape there. So you can go, let me just spend a little time on this. And actually what I'll do, now that I have it here is, um, So what I'm going to do now is just to get it uh, to, let's go ahead and mirror and weld it. I should have done that to start with. Um, I'll turn on symmetry. All right, let me kind of do this a bit, a bit over here. Sorry. Sometimes when I'm talking, I don't do obvious things that I should be doing. All right. So, but you can see what's happening is, um, let me just hide everything else other than these two things. So, you know, it's pretty stretched out there, right? And you're getting some artifacts, but that's not bad. And I'll show you how to, you know, it's pretty easy to deal with in ZBrush, but it actually sometimes leads to some more interesting shapes. And since I know we're doing kind of like branch shapes and there is some hardness to those, it's not like a perfectly smooth wire. I'm trying not to re-topologize it too early because I want to kind of get some of that. So 
just my goal here is just to kind of pull in and manipulate the shape that I can then merge with it and get kind of like another mm, sort of surface level branch shape without having to like worry about the underlying um, uh, mesh so much without you know disturbing it if you will. So it's about you know kind of working in layers and merging and when you're kind of working in VR especially if you're working in something like medium uh, it's super required really to work with that all right that's too low res so we're going to bump up our dynamis resolution that's not bad um, and then we're going to just keep pulling this around a bit see if i can get something i like and if i do we'll merge it in i just want to get a little more i just want to loosen this up a little bit You could use Sculptor's Pro mode. There's a lot of different ways you could do a similar thing, but I guess my point is it's a lot of times it's easier just to kind of have a separate piece of mesh that you're pulling around to get some of these shapes than to do everything with sculpting brushes. I mean, I'm using a brush on this, but rather than kind of like work in a unified way. All right, I'm just going to re-dynamesh it again, which you can do at any time just by kind of control dragging that around. Get some of this gesture in here, just boop. It's kind of a neat shape, though, that kind of intersects there. But create some interesting stuff. Sand is redone to mesh it. No, I'll probably easily raise the resolution if I wanted to. I want to take it, maybe, let's lower this a bit. Let's see, that was kind of an accident. And we'll just like, eh, leave it. See what happens. a little bit bigger. All right. All right, so let's say I'm super happy with that. <laughs> we'll just pretend for the moment. So what I'll do is um, you can go into this one above it, and I'm just going to merge down. Um, and now they're one mesh, but they're still separate elements. You know, they haven't been kind of put together. So now I can... Just let me just increase this dynamesh resolution and I'll redynamesh them. Say I lost a little too much. So I'm going to keep just kind of until I find the resolution I want for merging those. And that's pretty cool, right? So they're unified now, right? And so now I can sculpt on them as one thing. And that was much easier, probably. In some cases, that can be much easier. And you can wait till the end to kind of merge them. I just kind of did it here early just to show you kind of one way to kind of get some different shapes in your work. You know, I don't want to smooth it all out, of course, but and then I can sculpt on top of it with my clay brushes like I was. And I've been given this weird little accident up here where this thing is kind of like coming out a little bit, and I'm just going to leave it there. But but one could smooth that out or hide pieces and delete hidden, that sort of thing. But we're going to leave it. I'm just going to get back to sculpting on this now. and try and incorporate some of those shapes. And then maybe we should do some extraction at some point. Once I kind of get this, sh I must call this a shaft. Once I get in this, br <laughs> this branch um, into better shape, um, what I'll do is uh, maybe extract a few pieces from it. That's another good work close to just extract things and you get a separate mesh based on the underlying shapes and flow and then you can twist it around to add more interest. That's another good way to work I think for this sort of stuff. So we'll do that too. Let's see, now we do have um, we do have some in the original we or in the concept, we do have some uh, holes in here as well that I'm going to want to make at some point. Um, but I'm going to try not to do it too early just because I don't want to have to add resolution to support that. But I'm thinking about it. So like some of the areas, you know, like like this area here, which I'm just using the inverted version, is going to eventually be kind of probably a, a hollow, a hole in this area here. Yeah, and there's like another one right here that I had drawn may not work exactly how we want with the overall sculpt, so we could totally change where they're at and just kind of freeform it, which is more fun. 
Yeah. Like this one looks like it should really twist in a bit more, right? I always want to be more sketchy with 3D anyways, right? 3D is such a, can be such an overly clean way of enforcing an overly clean way of working, which is why tools like ZBrush or some of the Blender add-ons that we've looked at in the past are great because they let you look or look work really. You can look messy as well. Let you work really messy, and um, uh, yeah, that's kind of liberating. I think it has a little different character too to the final result than if you are working too clean all the time. still in so let's show where uh, let's try and get everything else to show so we can kind of look at the total thing yeah. obviously that was really quick and it needs a lot of work but you know as a quick way to get that into a little closer to a branch it wasn't too bad uh, okay so let's go up to the scully skull again uh, let's let's make sure this is symmetrical because it probably isn't because it came from VR and I was probably just like woo Oh, holy shit I'm moving stuff around and uh, now I'm not doing that so all right so now it's symmetrical and uh, let's smooth it out a little bit it's very or I'm not, I don't know about the top of this thing <laughs> it's a little dubious looking we're not actually going to use that anyways I think it's off camera in the original if I'm and I'm looking at my concept and it's not really there so we're going to get rid of that uh, so yeah, if you want to get rid of, there's many ways to delete things, um, but you can, um, uh, you can go to your masking brushes, uh, use a lasso for example, and just kind of like select this, uh, under it mask. And then I'll say, uh, let's hide those points and delete hidden. All right. So now they're gone. So now I have, I might have a hole in the mesh, but you know, when you go to DynaMesh it, DynaMesh will kind of repair all that automatically. There's, you know, more detailed ways you could do it, but why bother? All right. Uh, and then I'm going to make sure it's symmetrical again. Okay. So I can work in symmetry mode. <laughs> that is how VR meshes sound. Like when you're in VR, it's like, um, the, the, okay, so the hardest thing about VR art is not the tools themselves. It's, it's your brain because your brain is like, uh, it's so, um, it's so entranced in some way because, you know, you have depth perception and you're in this virtual space and you're like, uh, you know, you're almost like tripping. You're like, this is the most, this is amazing. It's going to look great. And then, you know, and it does look great. And then you kind of get out of VR and you're like looking at it in a 3D viewport or rendering it out. And you're like, oh, that looks all right. That's not, what was I fucking thinking? But it's just because I think when you're in the space, when you're viewing VR or in VR, it's so magical that, uh, you know, your art brain is like, it's going to totally translate. <laughs> and then quite often you're like, mm, not so much, not so much. That's all right still fun all right so i'm just thinking about uh scolifying this a little bit and i'm gonna hide everything else just to make it a little easier to work on scolify i want to do let me go i'm gonna go and um let's go in and actually yeah we're gonna inflate this edge a little bit just so i have a little more thickness for gum like things you see, obviously, that the polygons get stretched there, but hey, look at with DynaMesh, it's great. Just quickly drag and restore it. It's the best thing ever. All right, uh, we're gonna do clay build up. Start pulling these shapes out. I have this weird, kind of unusual thing coming this way in my sketch. We're just gonna go with. Where are we dropping gamers? What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, how's it going, Bri? Uh, I am sculpting. Yeah, it's not totally obvious from this. Is it? <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of stuff hidden at the moment. I'll show you the concept that we're working from. Here's the whole, well, I'm going to show you this too. This is, um, 
where we're at at the moment. Um, you know, still pretty early days, but what we're what we're doing is this. This is what we're sculpting. Um, so we did that concept a few sessions ago, uh, a few few streams ago, and now we're just kind of doing an overall uh, pass on that and trying to get it a little closer. So right now we're turning this wire sack, one could say, this wire cluster trunk into something that has a skull mouth on it, you know, as one does on a Sunday. Yes, Hannah is always very nice and uh, retweets all these things. This little jaw-like shape here. So yeah, a lot of a lot of the sort of branchy tree stuff is just kind of contour sculpting to kind of get a lot of these shapes in in space. Lies. Well, I didn't say you were sweet. I won't vouch that. Also, if I say that, it might actually be an insult. Isn't she sweet? That sounds like an insult, doesn't it? Most of this, I think most of this stuff is off camera up here, or gonna be off the camera for our final thing. So I won't do too much detail on it now. I'm just gonna kinda, of, let's just get some deeper tree grooves going on in here. Make it a little less uh, round. Just a little less round. That's my goal coming out of COVID, get a little less round. <laughs> COVID weight. <laughs> it is true. Uh, I mean, I don't know about you personally. <laughs> I'm just saying it is true for many people. I won't say my alcoholic consumption is higher than it was, but I will say that it's Formidable. There's no calories in alcohol, right? <laughs> this. Luckily for me, I don't have a sweet tooth at all. I am not sweet in any way, but I definitely don't have a sweet tooth, so I can avoid sugar pretty damn easily. All right. Yes. Using that snake hook again to try and get some more gesture. And I think we have our accu curve on. I'm going to turn it off for a minute just to kind of adjust the character of this a little differently. So we make it a bit more skull like. That's going to be a little too. I want the gesture just to be a little different than that. So I can just redynamesh it any time. There we go. Inflate this gum edge a bit more. <laughs> you know, uh, I haven't had an advent calendar in a while, a while, but the um, the ones the last one I had was a whiskey advent calendar, which was amazing. Also, probably not the best thing for me, but it was amazing. It was like a a dram of whiskey every day. Uh, and that was nice. And then like on the final day or perhaps the penultimate day, I don't remember which they had put like a really nice, um, uh, like, you know, I don't know, like a 26 year old or something, uh, bottle of whiskey. It was, it was very nice. Not bottle, but drama whiskey. It was very tasty. That's a good, it's a good Lee Christmas present. <laughs> A cheese calendar that sounds amazing I love cheese look I could just eat cheese and wine every day and I would I would have like the COVID 200 weight going on um, instead of the COVID 20 but uh, 
That's that's twenty pounds for you, you dirty Europeans. <laughs> Just sorry, I had to say that as a joke. Don't get me started about the metric system. It's definitely much better than the bullshit we deal with here. All right. <laughs> I normally say dirty socialist, but then I realize, like, well, <laughs> by the I'm a dirty socialist, but uh, you know. It's, a, it's really just a joke, but then I'm like, you know, people don't know that about me. They just think I'm, it's hard to say that ironically nowadays because they're like, oh, you're one of those Americans. And you're like, eh. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just, all right. So we're going to go like this. <laughs> I know. No, okay. There's only one complaint I have about Europeans. You ready for this? And this is, this is, this is an unforgivable sin. It's it's a two part unforgivable sin. All right, so here it is, uh, and it's not Marmite. I actually like Marmite, but it is um, it is in fact um, the fact that Europeans quite frequently not only wear socks with sandals, they wear black socks with sandals, and that's like a minor sin compounded into a seventh ring of hell sin. You're down there with the murderers for that. So um, other than that, everything's great. But you guys got to stop that. It's not good. The children of the world cry when that happens. <laughs> so, Chongo, you're guilty, aren't you? Or are you frowning about the... Uh... <laughs> you know... Uh, to be fair, I see that behavior in America from Europeans. So maybe it's like the Europeans who come to America are doing a lot of that sock sandal action. <laughs> it's getting a little more skull like it. Let's put some, um, well, I do want to make a few more holes in it first. Let's get some clay build up. Never warm enough. For, yeah, you know, it's, um, I don't know. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's blatant racism. That's, that's me. Wait, wait, that, can you call that racist? I didn't mention any race. So uh, we can call this uh, some other cultural prejudice I'm having. Unless you're going to argue that it's intrinsic to a particular European culture and cannot be separated, which, you know, maybe. Maybe the Dutch, for example. I don't know. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> It's a really minor thing to be really upset about. So, you know, I'm go I just I like to pick um you know, it's uh it's the like the William S. Burroughs thing about being addicted to a drug that doesn't exist. It's um yeah, it's a completely arbitrary thing to be to kind of die on. So, that's that's why I like it. No sock sandals and <laughs> uh yeah um i well yeah i mean i have a, a long uh, love affair with mr william s burroughs um i think he's still vastly underappreciated but uh uh yeah i mean growing when i was in high school uh, several of his books were still banned in america uh so that made me love him even more um but, uh, yeah, and then, of course, I also love Cronenberg, and he did a version of The Naked Lunch, which was, of course, much different than the book in a lot of ways, but still weird, and I enjoy it.
Wait, what? There's a beehive one there? Where did I miss that? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I can see that now. You guys. You guys are those people who look at non-objective abstract art and just talk about clouds, aren't you? Yeah. It's all right. It's fine. Yeah, I should just add some little eyes and then we'll be we'll be done, right? Well, I'm gonna add some teeth now in just a minute. So that will hopefully I uh, get beehive lady out of your out of your mind. You're like, nope, I'd stay in. It's punishment for all those sock comments. Trust me, I have made many standard skulls in my lifetime. That's, that's all I can do to, to not make everything a skull, so. Actually, before I do that, let me just go ahead and, what do I want to do? I want to just go ahead and append a cube. Oh my God, it's a huge cube. Why is it a huge cube? Because we did not put this in proper ZBrush space as previously described. So every time I add anything, we're gonna have to, I'm gonna complain about it. side first perfect that's it ship it it's done that's a tooth all right so we're <laughs> gonna start here and then I'm gonna just do a quick dynamesh on it uh, probably needs a bit more resolution than that still needs a bit more resolution than that dynamesh guy into place a little bit better <laughs> the cube the cube consumes all do not question the cube do not make eye contact with the cube this would see how I want, I want these teeth to look like make some more like that all right we'll go back to our you old favorite clay buildup soften this pull this out Subdivided it once. You're not going to obviously see these too close, so we're not going to really add much detail. I just don't want them to be perfectly smoothy everywhere. Let's just hide everything for the moment. Go to the back of it, get that little curve in it. Let's get snake hook, give it a little more gesture. You gotta get good at sculpting and can do basic stuff, but I've never been a very good artist, mostly due to lack of attention span. <laughs> uh, it's, um, yeah, I think any form of art just takes a lot of dedication, unfortunately, unless you happen to be incredibly lucky. But uh, yeah, I think um, there are certain styles that might uh, work better if you uh, don't wanna spend too long in a piece, for sure. That's probably, let's just do a little tiny. I don't want to add too much detail on this because we're just going to get a couple of strokes in here. All right. That's probably good enough for our basic tooth. So what we'll do now uh, is let's just move them around and duplicate them um, to get kind of half of the mouth. And then we'll mirror it because this uh, final painting is kind of from the side. So you're not really going to see 
both at the same time anyways. So we're on a single subtool right now and um, you could duplicate them, but you can also just like, um, if you're in this mode here, you can normally, hold on a sec, I say normally, but now of course it's not working, hold on. Wait a sec, is this, oops, let me turn off Dynamesh. Hmm, I'm having trouble with this today. Why am I having trouble with this? Oh, it's telling me right at the top. I have subdivision. So if you have subdivision levels, so there's a great quick way to um, duplicate things in ZBrush, and that's when you're in the move tool, you just hold down control and drag, and it puts another copy, puts it in the same layer, so you don't need to manage even more layers. But if you have multiple subdivision levels, which I did because I did a quick subdivision, it won't do it. And there's like a little small error message that was popping up there and I wasn't looking at it. So uh, you got to clean that up if you want to. And then you can like control click. If they have different um, poly groups, uh, which this one doesn't, but I can make it real quick. You can control click back between the stuff on the same layer and it'll auto mask the other ones. So that's a pretty nice way to quickly just go and add, you know, a bunch of stuff in. I'm going to make these teeth a little gnarly. super lined up and not the same size which is good and then I'll just I'm, hit, I'm hitting control W which is just switching the poly group on the active so that I can keep doing this and adjusting them without having to split a bunch of separate layers up it can be a little tricky to get it it sometimes doesn't want to do it if you're too far out because it doesn't do the hit detection so see like I'm clicking on this one and it's like nope nope I didn't have that. Oh, it's because they have the same poly group. That's why. So uh, you can you can just go into here and just do an auto groups, which will just give you separate poly groups if uh, if they're disconnected like that, and then you can kind of just jump around. Anyway, so it's just it's it's just a more you know managing all the layers in ZBrush can be a bit annoying. So I kind of just try and do things that for concept sculpts like this that I don't really have to manage it too much. All right, so. Control drag, make another copy. Whoa, look at that, that was an accident. I accidentally clicked on rotate instead, or uh, scale instead of rotate. So you can quickly get some ugly teeth in here. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, old, old stuff. Uh, I used to do a lot of low poly modeling. Um, you know, I, I started working in the game industry back in the PlayStation one days, so, um, I used to do a lot of like really clean low poly modeling as well. And it has, there's a certain art to it that I like, but um, I think fundamentally I want to be messy. And so um, I, I kind of, I don't know, it's really nice to not have to, you know, with, with a lot of retopology as the sort of common way to deal with mesh now, um, it has the advantage of being able to separate the idea of maintaining clean mesh from the actual act of sculpting, which I think is, is really important uh, mentally um, for the creative process. And I think that's, you know, I don't know. I really like that act about it, about modern workflows. Modern, I should say contemporary workflows, since modern is a loaded word, especially in art. All right, so we're gonna do this. It's looking pretty, right? Everyone likes those teeth. Who wouldn't want those teeth in their mouth? What I'm gonna do, let's see, get rid of that. Let's do another um, auto groups so I can go back into the move tool and grab this guy here. Do another duplication. Get some more up here. If I was gonna do a lot of teeth too, another fun way to work would be to, um, to make a mesh insert brush, which you can do quite easily from any sort of individual mesh. And then you could just quickly drag them onto your model. They'll surface constrain themselves and you could, but I'm not adding a million teeth. There's just a few here, so I'm not bothering, but that's another fun way to, um, to break things up, to kind of handle this sort of like lots of objects being populated across a mesh. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, 3d was never really my main focus either. Um, but when I started in the game industry, there weren't really any concept artists. There were a few, like there, but the team size wasn't big enough, and the visual fidelity on the 
thing didn't really require it. And there were some 2D artists, but I kind of started in the game industry right around the time that 3D art was, was uh, or 3D games were becoming a thing. And so most of the 2D artists who didn't adapt to 3D art workflows lost their jobs. So uh, guess what I did? I adapted. Um, but um, yeah, that, that happened for a while. All right, so we're gonna, so now I just try and do both and mix them and just learn new stuff whenever I can. All right, so uh, we are going, so we could keep developing these, but let me quickly just go and do a um, deer and wild. No, what, you know what? Uh, okay, so I'm gonna, this is gonna have to be the annoying way of doing this. Uh, I'm, this is because my mesh is not really set up properly because it came in from VR, so. I'm just going to duplicate this, and then I will mirror the duplicate. But um, let me just get these a little cleaner here. Reset this for one, and just kind of move. Okay, thank you for turning that off, ZBrush. And then I'm just going to go into. There's a bunch of ways you can mirror stuff, but I'll just use the the old school. Where is the old school? Which I rarely use. There we are which, <laughs> oh my God, uh, God damn it, ZBrush, you're such a pain in the ass. All right, let me go to, um, it's really my fault because I, like I said, this mesh wasn't really set up cleanly. All right, so I'm just going to do this. This is kind of a pain. You can see my center point is way off from that, on that layer. So there's a lot of different ways you can do with it, but if you just go and say unify, it should put it back in there. Uh, or not. Okay, well, it usually works. Where did it put it this time? Okay. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure why I did that. Guys, somehow, sometimes this is a big, messy thing. Uh, and <laughs> there we go. Uh, it's a little bit better now. But did it actually mirror it? Or it mirrored it before. Give me a second. Okay, it mirrored it before. I just put it way the fuck off there when I unified it. That's all right. It's easy to fix, and I don't really care because uh, I'm just going to combine them now, anyways. But all right. The important part is we got it in there. Uh, and I, you know, obviously I can go back and sculpt these a bit so they're not perfectly symmetrical. Um, it doesn't, like I said, we're going to be rendering it from this side thing, so it doesn't really matter a whole lot um, for this particular thing. So I'm going to probably stop there with them. And I'm just going to merge them together so I have the two together. I could make them symmetrical again at this point. It doesn't really matter, so I won't bother. I'm going to merge them down. So now I have our teeth. And at this point, if I wanted to go and do some additional sculpting on them, I could. But what I want to do is I think um, I want to go into back into our kind of uh, skull shape and make it a little more skully. So I'm going to add um, some subdivisions to it. So I'm going to save this real quick. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to subdivide it a bit. We're going to stop dynameshing it. Let's look at the topology. All right, so if I subdivide this, you know, it's still not the world's best topology, right? So what you can do, and I'm going to save before I do this because um, it will sometimes shit the bed. Uh, so I'm going to go into here. I'm going to do a Z remesh which will do a, uh, I'm going to tell it, give me the same amount of polys. It'll take a minute. This is pretty low, so it shouldn't take too long. But it'll give you a nice, uh, evenly divided uh, surface that's much easier to sculpt on, assuming it doesn't die. So we'll see. And it usually reduces the polygons a bit, too, because it doesn't need them. So yeah, it went from like 113,000 to 92, and you see it's a nice, quadded, fairly evenly divided mesh now. So it's a little easier to sculpt on, right? So now I can kind of go in, and if I wanted to find, and I could subdivide it further, which I'll probably need to do. But, um, yeah, see, that's still like too low subdivision for what I want at this point. I'm just going to subdivide it once. Um, the nice, what was that? My, sometimes my pressure sensitivity pops off for a minute and it um, makes these really strong. There we go. Okay, now we're back. Oh, windows. I dig out a nose hole. Just quickly making those. And then um, let's grab a uh, snake hook. A little bit bigger. 
right here. Yeah, it's one thing, you know, obviously, when you work on uh, 3D in a, in a, what a VR aficionado would call a flat screen experience, you do actually wind up rotating quite a bit all the time, right? Because your brain is trying to like see this thing in 3D. So it's funny when you watch people do 3D art, they're like constantly rotating. But in VR, you don't really tend to do that so much because you have depth perception. And so that's kind of interesting, just an interesting difference. I think my pressure sensitivity just went away again. Come back. Yeah, see, I'm barely touching it and it's going nuts. Well, what is. That's so much fun when pressure sensitivity randomly dies on you. I might have to reload it. We'll see. All right. Hey guys, let me just quit ZBrush. Reload. better. Okay, let me flip it around. Local symmetry needs to be turned back on. Okay, yeah, see, now I can actually do something with a modicum of subtlety. Not that I call this particular piece subtle in most ways, but you know. All right, just using my favorite clay block and brush here, clay build it brush rather. depth of this thing got a little bit lost. Sometimes worth doing a quick, uh, just simple render, just to sort of see how the shapes are reading with some shadow up there. Look at my concept. So this guy, I kind of want to carve this out a bit more. Oops, wrong. Posting a photo. Hopefully this is a very family-friendly photo, photo you've posted and nothing too disturbing. I'm not looking at it. <laughs> Are you um, more of a 2D artist then? Do you, is art still a thing that you, you do a lot of and just not as much 3D? Or do you work in another medium other than visual art? Or Yeah. 
Yes, well, coding is something I cannot do at all, really. So, a very specific th thing. What sort of uh, programming do you do? Like, do you, do you do it for a job or as a hobby or both? Yeah, cool. What sort of uh, languages do you end up programming in for your day job? Nice. So you said uni, so that means you must be British. There's no one in America says that. I'm making bold generalizations. We'll see if I'm right. Go, huh? I don't know anything about that. <laughs> You're American and you said uni? What? See, you ruined my bold, ignorant generalization. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I was just see. I was where this was gonna. I was gonna start going back to uh, socks and sandals again, but now I can't even make that joke. <laughs> Fortran, man, I, I learned Fortran back um, in college in the late 80s. I had, to, I had to do Fortran on a giant VAX terminal, which was, um, which was uh, not pleasant. So I'm going through now and kind of flattening. I'm using the, um, I'm using uh, Trim Dynamic. There's a lot of different brushes that do some form of flattening just to kind of get rid of some of the, uh, the CG squish, uh, the, the squishiness that ZBrush makes so nicely. <laughs> Make it a little less round and a little more chiseled, I guess, when we describe it. Not going like hard surface with it or anything, but just trying to get out of that a little bit. Uh, Get a little more nuance there. Worry about that nose area. I think I want a few more of these recesses to be a little deeper. So maybe what I'll do is get um. What I want to use for that, I guess I could just use the stand for that. I, uh, let's see, my first programming language ever that I learned was, was basic, of course, like a lot of people back in the day. And that was, that was with a cartridge that went into my Atari 800. So, uh, it had 48 K Ram. Uh, so as you can imagine, I wrote incredibly complex programs with that. Now, you know, what's funny is, is, um, I got lucky and got a computer at a young age, which no, you know, my family didn't have a lot of money, but my mom felt really strongly that I should learn about computers. So she like actually took a loan out to make sure I had a computer as a kid, uh, which was amazing, like against the house, right? Which was like crazy that she did that for me. And um, uh, my dad signed me up. I was, I think I was eight. My dad signed me up for a college course because no one taught programming back. There's no online resources. My dad taught me, signed me up for a college course on basic programming. And I don't know how he talked them into letting an eight-year-old <laughs> into this class. Uh, so I went to this class, and uh, it was it was interesting. Uh, they 
said math things that of course I had no idea the math stuff at that age. I was like, I haven't learned that math. So I sort of had to just kind of figure out how to do things just indirectly. Uh, but yeah, it was, I remember, I remember the very first thing I programmed was a nuclear war simulation. <laughs> I remember it was like, we had these, uh, Atari 800, uh, you know, computers are very primitive, but, but I, I had some like input that you were allowed to put into as, as, as a user, like you type in input and no matter what you did, I think, I think, I don't remember. I mean, I didn't have any like text parsing logic or anything advanced like that, but I had some way, maybe it asked you a question and you had different answers. No matter how you answered this question, it ended in nuclear escalation and destruction. And then I would like, I, I remember I just was like a seizure warning I should have put on this. I was like, flash the screen and played every sound I could. And it was like red and green. And then I drew some nuclear. <laughs> Uh, it was it was a little you know probably I think it kind of disturbed the um, college people a bit because they were they were doing more collegey things and this uh, precocious eight year old was like I just killed you all with nuclear escalation what's math anyways that was my first uh, <laughs> foray into computer programming at a very young age. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess I was. I don't know what I was doing. I, don't, I didn't, didn't play many games at that time. It just sort of felt like, I don't know, I guess it was on my mind. Right. Come back to these teeth a little bit later, but I think everything's okay for now. Move on to some other parts. I don't think any of this sort of stuff appears even on screen, so I'm not gonna, um, at, at some point I'm gonna have to set up the camera so I can figure that out, but right now I'm not worried about it. I'm just, just trying to get it going. I don't want to spend too much time on texture or anything right now either because we'll come back to that later. So this will probably be a little bit early to do this, but I'll, I'll show you. Let me actually just fix this nose a bit, and then I'll show you something that is uh, the biggest cheat ever that I always use in ZBrush, as do many people doing concept work. But, uh, so let me get this nose a little more how I want it. <laughs> Thanks. I know there, there have to be a skull here somewhere. I think this is, I think this ridge here should be flattened a little bit. This is a little too bulbous. I think it'll be stronger if I just chisel this out a little bit. Now you can see that once again, the topology has been kind of moved there. So I could subdivide that or I could re -Z, -rush, Z remesh and project the detail if I really wanted to. But again, this is gonna be a painting and it doesn't really need all, I wanna leave some stuff to paint. So it doesn't really need all of that. Dr. Willie, is that a, a euphemism? I'm, <laughs> see, I was gonna ask if that's a British thing, but because it sounds like a British insult. All right, so we're going to Oh, <laughs> oh, Wiley, sure, now you're changing it. Clearly it was Dr. Willie. And yes, I am Dr. Willie. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'll show you this cheat now, which is, uh... <laughs> it's all right, it's fine. I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna kink shame anyone in the chat. All right, so we're going to do...
That's a weird little pour I accidentally created there. I'm gonna leave it. All right, so um, let me save this. So one of the things uh, that is a really cool operation you can run in ZBrush is uh, clay polish. And so what clay polish does is it, um, I'm gonna delete the little subdivision. So clay polish, um, it, it's got its own little section here. And so it, it tends to, depending on how you set it, it basically tends to sharpen your mesh and emphasize plane. So it looks at the angle and kind of, um, kind of creates more flat planes there. Um, so um, for things that are kind of like bone or tree, it can be a really nice way. It does distort your topology a bit. So if you're gonna sculpt a lot on it, you may not wanna do it, but I'm gonna show you. So you can see this before, and if I do hit that, you can see immediately what it did there, right? Is, and if you look at the topology, it messed with it a bit, not too bad in this case, but it gave it more pronounced angles, but it still didn't get rid of really soft curves. And um, so you have an option to, to, if I undo that and go back, it you have a way of, of like I could increase the sharpness or and you could, you know, which could get even sharper. So you see we even have even a sharper thing there, which can be, can look a little too much in ZBrush. However, ZBrush kind of has a way of exacerbating edges visually. And when you render it, it can actually be great because it catches a little more lighting that way. Um, and it tends to look better. So that is a super big cheat. Just be careful that if you do it early and you're gonna do a lot of additional sculpting on it, you may have made that a little harder to do. Um, uh, and Blender has a version of it that's not maybe quite as nice that um, I haven't used their latest, so I know they've been working on a little bit, but yeah. Yeah, there is, uh, Blender does have a few things that uh, they have mesh filters is what they call them, I believe, that and they have one that's similar. I can't remember what they call it at the moment. Uh, let me try it out. So for these teeth, I'm going to, uh, let me just, I want to sharpen them up a little bit, even though I don't want to spend too much time on them because they're gonna be really tiny, but they're a little too uh, too much like chiclets right now. So I'm going to, uh, or whatever, insert your favorite mint candy there. All right, so I'm using the H polish brush, which just is creating planes. It's a little different than Trim Dynamic. Trim Dynamic tries to um, preserve the curvature of the mesh, and this, this doesn't give two shits about that. So it just kind of, now see, I'm kind of affecting these other things, and I don't want to. So I could, let me undo this for a sec. So I could, um, I could, I'm gonna undo all of my work here just so I can show you something. So I could hide them individually, but that's kind of annoying, right? And so there's another way you can deal with this. So you can see the all have individual poly groups. And so if that's the case, if you go into your brush tools under masking, there is something called a topology mask. I just gotta figure out where it's at because I don't use it that often. Uh, you do auto masking and you can see topological, right? So that means that, see, it's not touching anything with a different topology. And you, you can really see that if I, let me undo that, if I go and grab the snake tool. So these are all in the same layer, but based on the topology, of course, now it's doing this, because I switch brushes. So I have to go into here again, hold on a sec. Save back, because these are per brush settings. So now you can see that, oh, it's still affecting it. It's affecting it less though, right? Like you can see it's kind of, uh, it. It looks like it still grabs it somehow, which is interesting. So it must it must confuse the snake brush, but it does sort of work on snake hook. I've never really used it on snake hook, so maybe it's not the greatest one on snake hook, but it definitely works on this. Um, so you can see that it's not affecting those other teeth. So um, you also want to make sure and turn on back face mask, which I use it so much I have up here, because otherwise, if you're on a thin object like this and you're flattening the front, you're going to be like affecting the other side of it, which is you know real real annoying. Uh, yeah, I really like Blender. I've only been using, I've been using Blender for less than a year, but I've used it a lot for, um, a lot for rendering because Eevee is really great and fast. And, um, also I have a, um, I did this video a, a couple months ago. It's just like a little tutorial video that's on YouTube. That's, um, that's just on, um, using, it's kind of, it's about happy accidents in your process. And I did it all in Blender using kind of really sloppy modeling tools to design a character. And that was, that was pretty fun. Um, I really like Blender as a tool. And uh, yeah, the, the level of like how fast it's developing as a tool is amazing. Like it, it keeps, uh, with each release, there's so many new things added. And uh, there's so many great add-ons in the community. And I buy a lot of those add-ons because they're quite inexpensive. And then you're supporting independent creators, which is fantastic. So it's good. Since 2.4, yeah.
Yeah, I, I think uh, I think I started using it two eight one. Do I want to say that two eight one? It was when it was two eight. It's basically after they did the big UX pass on it because before then I was like, mm. not that it wasn't learnable. I just had so many other tools. I was like, uh, I don't know, I don't know. And EV wasn't really that great, and EV was a big thing for me because I use it for a lot of concept and uh, having a, a real time viewport renderer that is uh, doesn't require rendering and you can get some good results out of it is a huge benefit for uh, artists who are more interested in using it as part of a painting or a concept. So for me, that was a, a game changer, which is why I waited till about then. Was it 2.5? Yeah, I think it was 2.8 was when I started using it then. I think that was, that was, uh, that was the more modern one, right? The more modern UX, yeah, yeah. Which, you know, and I know I'm sure longtime users probably weren't a fan of some of the choices, but for folks like me that were new to it, it was nice. Now I use it a whole lot. And it is great. I just updated to 291 last night. I hadn't done that and updated all my plugins and all that stuff. So looking forward to digging into those new features. Features. So maybe we'll render this in Blender uh, in a couple of weeks when I'm all done with the sculpt. All right, that's a little bit better. And I think I still kind of want these to have a little more gesture. And let me um, unhide this. And as we discovered, the snake hook doesn't completely work with auto topology. <laughs> so I I don't really want to split these up. But um, what I could do is just click on them individually. If you control shift on an individual thing, it'll hide it um, based on the poly group. So you can also just do that as a real quick way to kind of look at that. Oh my God, look at that. <laughs> this is interesting sometimes to see what you can do. Let's turn off vacuum mask, turn on accu curve. I just want to get a little more twist in some of these. And then I can just unclick off, click another one. So it's much faster than spending time to sort through all the other stuff. This one needs to go down a bit. Let's move this whole thing over a little bit too. Where'd my fucking move brush go? Yeah, thanks for that. Get over there. I'm just gonna move the other one too, that's all right. Can't see it. There you go, some reasonable teeth up there now. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, you know, Hard Ops is great, and I have owned it for a while, but I will say that I haven't fully um, embraced it yet. Um, but I do have, I do am using Hard Ops and Box Cutter. Um, also, lately, I really like uh, Quick Curve and Quick Shape, uh, Quick Deform. That sort of set are great for concept work. Um, uh, I'm using the new Scatter plugin, Physical Starlight uh, is another one I've been using a lot for um, environment shading. Um, those are probably the ones that I've been using the most, uh, and they're great. They're all great, uh, but I, I, you know, I don't really feel like I have the best understanding of them from overall work. Like I, I use them for certain things, but I, I need to kind of spend a little more time with them to really get a deeper understanding, so that they're a little more intuitive as I'm just making art and I'm not thinking about tools as much, which I think is when you make the best work. So, um, not quite there with any of those yet. All right, so I think the next thing I'm going to do is kind of work on this bigger shape here, and I'm going to. I'm going to get it into, I'm looking at my concept, and one of the things, I'm going to pull this over and show you this. So one of the things I wanted to do was in areas like this here where there is going to be more bone-like shapes, I wanted to have more horizontal striations. Um, and I'm going to mainly do that towards the end for the detail pass, but just to talk about it. And it could, that would let me separate from the tree stuff, which is a little more straight contour. So what I want to do, though, is I'm going to get this into a little bit better shape to get a little closer to this flow. And then I'm going to use... Some masking and extract these as separate meshes, and they'll follow the contour, and then we'll snake hook and pull them around to get some of this gesture. So that's what I'm gonna work on right now. Let's see how that works. To those. Um, and yeah, this 
this uh, the other thing is like this this little sack area here should be part of this thing really for the gesture I want to do. So I think I'm going to separate it from this mesh so I can kind of combine it with other stuff. So what I'm going to do is um, let me just double check something wrong. Let me and yeah, what I could do is I'll just I'm going to give it a I'll give it a its own poly group and I'll separate it. Uh, so let me just go to my masking tools and it doesn't have to be the whole thing. Uh, actually, what I want is a lasso. I forgot we restarted and it reverts to the defaults. Okay, so we're gonna go in here. I'm just gonna kind of grab this area. And I'm just gonna give this thing that we grabbed a different poly group, so, which I just did. I tried to use too many shortcut keys so you can see what I'm doing, but I, Control W is just so useful. That basically just like uh, gives a different poly group to what is uh, selected and then deselects. So it's really great for quick separation of poly groups. And then what I can do is I can go into, um, you'll see the split, I can just say group split and it'll say, okay, I'll undo this. And you're like, okay. So it looks like I just deleted it. And we have a hole here now, which we don't care about, but if we did, we could use Dynamesh to close it. Um, and, but what it did is it then made this its own separate subtool. So we have this subtool now and this subtool. So now I'm gonna combine this with this. You can also see how, since we merged those two meshes before, it's still left over some of those poly groups, which we don't really care about anymore, but it's interesting nonetheless. So uh, let me just move this. Um, uh, let me just move this down, it'll be easiest, I guess. I really need to organize this a little bit. You know, watching me organize a layer stack on a stream is not probably your idea of fun. So we're not going to do it. All right, so I'm going to go here and just merge this down. Is that what I want to do? Yeah, I'll just merge it down. Be easy. Okay. So now we have this big, beautiful boy uh, with all these things. I'm just going to get rid of these polygroups. Um, I use OBS. Um, I've never used Streamlabs, so I don't know if it's better or not, but oh, I just, OBS is so easy to use. I just wind up using it for everything. Um, you know, when I actually, well, if I want to do tutorial vids and stuff, I just record using OBS too, since I have it installed. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I could probably do that, couldn't I? That would probably be smart. Get some input overlay in there. That would be a good idea. That is a smart idea. But then I wouldn't have any excuse for being inefficient. <laughs> Be like, what? What do you like about Streamlabs more than uh, OBS? So we're gonna smooth this together a bit. I'll leave some of those weird little shapes, why not? We'll be adding more weird little shapes. Don't worry if your favorite weird little shapes go away right now. We'll add more. But we don't actually need this weird thing up here because I think that's totally invisible. So I'm just gonna, just to get rid of some garbage, I'm just gonna hide those points and delete them. No need to, to have them. And this stuff is kind of embedded in the head, which is fine. See it's separating a bit there, which is good. So what we're gonna do now, and that's visible, I'll just use snake up real quick to kind of um, kind of pull this around in a shape, get a little closer to our concept. Need the starting point anyways. Hmm. It's cool, yeah, I'll check it out. Is it also, um, sort of uh, mostly free like OBS or is it a piece of software that you buy? Not that I think people shouldn't buy it if they use it a lot, I'm just curious. Yeah, 
pretty happy with the overall gesture of this, I think. Before I dig into a little more, so maybe this could be a little more interesting. Yeah, you know, uh, Mr. Rebecca, you probably know a whole lot more about streaming. Like, I'm such a noob at Twitch streaming. I only figure out the very basics. I'm like, ah, I should put where the chat's on the window so when I repost it on YouTube, people can see the chat. Or, I like, I don't even know to see how, who's in the stream, right? I just have a chat window. I have no idea how many people are here. <laughs> like, who's in it? I'm super, I'm super basic about it. I really should spend some time to figure it out a little bit better. Um, but I at least wanted to get, uh, I was like, I don't know. This one at least wanted to get started on streaming and without spending a lot of time to ramp up on everything. But I should, I should stop being lazy about it. I don't know where to start. You know, as a thing, I guess I could just watch. I guess I could just sit there and mess with it and figure it all out. But I just, just hadn't really thought about where to start with all that. So I just got the basics working. Well, you're certainly more professional than I am. You stream, you guys stream quite a bit. <laughs> you like how not fancy him? Well, I'll take that as a compliment. No, I mean, you know, there's people who are, uh, have it all figured out and are very, um, I don't know. I just, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't have a ton of free time. So I, I would just wanted to, I guess I just wanted to make sure I could make it about making art. <laughs> Not that it's mutually exclusive with all the other fun stuff, but I just, I, I feel like if I was doing a lot of the other stuff, I'd probably have to do it a little bit more regularly, which, uh, frequently I should say, um, which I wouldn't mind. I just don't. I just don't think I have the time, unfortunately. Hmm. Has it been that little? I don't know. For some reason, I thought it was longer than that. I don't know why. We're keeping this one punk rock. That's whenever, whenever I do like a um, don't spend a lot of time on something or it's lo-fi. Just say, yeah, it's punk rock. That's your, makes it seem intentional. Yeah, yeah, he, I mean, he obviously has a huge stream and stuff. That's, um, I don't remember the first Nerd Cube stream I saw. It was a number of years ago. I don't remember. I don't even remember when it was. I remember when I first saw uh, Deidre, who's on here. Oh, she was on here earlier. She still is. Yeah, she, uh, I first saw her streams when I think she posted some uh, playthroughs of Headlander and someone at work sent them around, and we thought they were great. So we all started, um, everyone at Double Fun was just watching her streams and stuff. So I think that's when it was. I think it might have been Camden from work who first sent it around. I know. I'm like, I have such a, such a, uh, I have such a, uh, simple setup. I have like this old webcam sitting on top of my cable modem. <laughs> I don't have a stand for it really. And I have a decent mic. It's a Yeti mic, but I need to get a boom arm because it's kind of like hanging on the side of my desk. But... Decent gesture in here. Right. Hmm. 
but I like, you know, I think, I think, um, I don't know, maybe this is just me justifying my laziness, but I think there's so many other great streams out there where people are very performative and they're high energy and stuff. And I kind of, I kind of just like it's Sunday. I just want to make some art. I kind of want it to be kind of chill, you know, does that make any sense? And, um, I don't know. That's my, my laziness. You got paid to, oh, you got to play. I thought you said you got paid to play the demo. Oh, did you, Dieter, did you go, um, did you go like into that back room where they had the demos at PSX 2015? Cause I was there demoing it, I, but I don't know if you came by when I was there, but I was at least in the room and I was watching a lot of people play cause you know, we were still developing the game. So I was definitely taking gameplay notes when people were playing. I don't know if that was the room that you were in or where you played it at PSX. I remember that year because it was in, it was the, one of the few years that was in San Francisco at the uh, Moscone, the old Moscone, which has been rebuilt or expanded heavily. Yeah, they had, uh, I was like in some sort of press room, I think most of the day, but I wasn't doing press interviews. It was just like a, it was on a floor with another, I don't know, it was maybe a dozen games or so. I was, I was, I was right next to the Firewatch guys because um, that was, uh, I know, I know several of the people who worked on that title and um, some of them used to work at Double Fine with me and um uh, there, I think their demo was right next to or near Headlander, and they're both in development. So I remember spending a lot of time talking to Jake during that PSX. Seems like forever ago. I guess it was five years ago, wasn't it? It was forever ago. And then I remember uh, Alex from Choice Provisions came by, and he really liked the game, so we were talking about it. He's a cool guy. He's a total Santa Cruz guy, which I love. Choice Provisions now. It used to be called Gaijin Games, I think, at that time. I think that's right. I think they hadn't changed their name yet. They did all the Bit Trip Runner stuff. It was their big big hit. They used to be a, their studio used to be across the street from Double Fine in San Francisco. I'm going to have to send it. Let's take a look at this topology for a moment. All right, I'm going to subdivide it. That's a big enough thing. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I enjoyed PSX quite a bit. Yeah, uh, they did well for themselves. They're all really talented folks. Um, uh, they did great, yeah. Um, yep yeah they definitely I think they made a really cool game at the right time in the market for that sort of game and um, you know like I think that I, ho I hope they like how Valve's worked out for them but yeah then they got to work on Alex and um, yeah it's cool it's very cool Yeah, I know. You know what I miss? Getting a PS5. I still don't have one. <laughs> still, like it's been, it's only been like what a month. I figured I'm just gonna have to wait till they're uh, much easier to get a hold of. It's been too crazy. get that twisting around energy not from sculpting in like this but from wrapping additional mesh over it later so I'm just gonna try and not because I have a lot of that sort of twisting 
gestural stuff, but I think the best way to get at it is not to try and sculpt it into this base, but to add some additional mesh layers layer. So I'm just gonna try and get the overall shapes, the foundation in here a little bit better before I do any of that sort of work. Yes, I, you know, you've been playing, you've been, uh, you know, also I still have yet to play Ghosts of Tsushima and I've really been wanting to play that. Uh, and I saw that it's got a co-op mode now, so now I can probably play it with my daughter because she's would be super into it. Um, we've been playing through, we've been playing through A Plague's Tale lately together, which uh, is really good. I've been really enjoying that game. I think we're just about done with it. We play a little bit at night. render with some shadows it's hard to look at the shadows all that stuff in the way all right this top here I'm gonna kind of flatten I'm gonna dig in a few of these channels a little bit more and then I'm gonna flatten it out a little bit in parts so right around here is when it starts to get into more of the the bone shapes so I wanna get some of this cross, kind of almost like a ram horn sort of energy is gonna happen in here eventually. Now I'm just gonna put in some horizontal strokes that are just gonna not be detailed, but just as a basis of that sort of thing. Well, that would be an ambitious project. Yeah, there's, um, there is, uh, I don't, I don't know about more of a traditional um, 3D package for iPad, um, but there is a nice ZBrush like. There are two really good ones actually. There's Nomad Sculpt and Forger, and they're both pretty great. Um, for you know, they both aren't ZBrush level, of course, but uh, they're both cool. Um, you might check those out, see if you like what you think about them. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the iPad Pro's got some serious power uh, behind it. It could easily have something. Eventually this is gonna be a tricky transition to get just right, but for now I'm just getting some of this in here. Yeah, and of course, uh, with ZBrush, or sorry, with uh, iPad, it's also maybe not the best for developers in some ways, but the price point is so, I mean, Forger is, and Nomad Sculpt, they're like 10 bucks or so, and they're crazy amount of like stuff going on there. It's like physically based rendering and nice, they have topo retopology tools and voxel remesh and some really great brushes and they're really snappy. I mean, I mean, you're not gonna be putting probably 15 million polygons onto one of them, but like, they're, it's good. They managed to simplify the interface down to being very reasonable with a touch interface without having a lot of menu diving and still get a lot of the functionality. So pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah, that's probably, that's probably a good idea <laughs> to, to reuse some of that. That sounds smart. I would imagine that would be, even with that, you know, it's pretty challenging. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like, you know, obviously I like using a Cintiq and uh, using these sort of high-end tools, but at the same time, there is something nice about a mobile platform, you know? There is something like, I really like sketching in Procreate, for example, not because I don't like Photoshop or anything, but there's, it's a combination of Procreate being a very great tool, but also just the, the, the iPad service is a pleasure to draw on, and, and you don't have to be at a computer desk to do it, you know? Um, it's just, it's a combination of things that makes it feel a little different. Um, 
and sometimes that's good to kind of loosen you up a bit get you you know not always being at your desk so I it's it's, it's nice I think it's a it could be cool as an art tool for sure mm -hmm. yeah I agree with you I agree with you I think that would be really good really great well I'll be your beta tester just let me know if you want we can we can stream some Actually, I do want to stream some iPad art, art creation. I needed to kind of figure out the best way to, to get it streaming through Twitch. Um, the last time I tried it was a few years ago, and there wasn't a great way. And it was like using a third-party app called Mob Crush, which was okay. But I haven't really looked into it in a couple of years. So I need to figure out how people are doing this. I like to do some Procreate, at the very least, streams and such. But um, for idea development and things like that, I think it would be a fun, fun stream. I just haven't looked into the best way to get it, get it streaming. Well, if you get work at Google, the Google, that can be your Friday project at Google, right? Do they still do that where programmers get Fridays to do personal projects that the, that Google does not automatically own, if I remember right? They, that used to be a big thing that they had offer. I don't know if that's still that way or not. Yep, that used to be a big thing. Um, I I don't know for sure if it's something that they still do, but that was their one of their ways. And a lot of a lot of um, my understanding is a lot of the products that they eventually became hits from came out of that. And people like um, I know a programmer there. Uh, I, I can't say too much because I don't know how public knowledge is. Who has got a few patents on stuff they develop by working there, and they have some ownership over that. Um, so that's pretty cool if they still do that. I don't know how limited that is or not, but uh, it's neat as a concept, right? Like, and, and as a company, if you have the money to do it, you totally benefit from it. Like imagine working as an artist at a studio. It's a same, assuming the studio had Google's crazy amount of money. And they're like, well, every Friday you can just work on your personal art projects. But the stuff that you learn from that or, you know, interactivity, or if you're a game designer, just testing new small video game verbs that people haven't used. If you're able to like do that, you know, once a week or when, whenever the frequency would make sense is like, it would definitely feed back into your other work that would benefit the company. And, you know, maybe you stumble upon something that the company would be really interested in developing further as well. If they had, you know, if you got some additional ownership over it or whatever, that's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 I'm not, I'm not a pro, uh, Google in any particular way. It was just, it was just, uh, just, an, just something I remember at the time. This is a long time ago when I first heard about it. I thought it was a pretty neat idea. Certainly a better use of resources if you're a company with that much money than, say, you know, making more millionaires billionaires. But, hey, that's just me. This is getting a little weird up there. <laughs> I'm not sure where that's going, but we'll leave it for now. I think it's gonna it's gonna be some cool horn-like shapes eventually. That'll look really good when I clay polish that area too. Okay, so what I want to try now is uh, well, no, you know, not quite yet. Let's see how much time do we have left? We got ten minutes left. Um, oh, here's interesting. Um, ten minutes left. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try and define this area here a little bit, and then I'm gonna extract a bit so you guys can see that extraction workflow I was talking about, which is pretty cool. All right, so let me just burn through this real quick just to get a little more uh, structure in here. Speed up a little bit here. Turn and work fast if I have to. A little bit 
better. Uh, let me just do a tiny bit of smoothing and some few define a few planes a bit better. Keep that kind of woody, bony feel in the final mesh. All right. And this area needs a little sun. Better, right? Yeah, yeah, just a couple of minutes. Uh, hmm. Huh, that's an interesting thought. Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends on what your, you know, your end goal is. Is it to learn? You know, is it to just uh, get something out and improve on it? And so you don't like doing the basics over and over you know, yourself don't make sense. And so it makes sense to buy stuff. Um, that's kind of what I look at. Just like a lot of artists with Kitbash and some, some artists are down on it and some are like, no, it's the only way to work. It's fast. And um, uh, my, I guess my feeling about it is uh, I don't have a philosophical stance. Oh, my pressure sensitivity is gone again. Whoa, how did that happen? See, it's gone again. Sometimes when you, this is what happens. Sometimes you save in ZBrush and when you save, your pressure sensitivity just goes away. And I don't know whose fault that is. Let me see if I reopen this, if it'll, maybe I don't have to quit the entire app. Nope, we're gonna have to quit the entire app again. Thanks, thanks guys. Uh, so uh, what I was gonna say was, um, it is the way, uh, yeah, like what, like what AC Williams is saying, like as a prototype, it's great. Like you prove concept, you bring your stuff up quick and fast. Um, but, um, you know, it just depends on what your goals are. If your goal is to learn, like, for example, if your goal is to learn to draw, then you shouldn't be tracing stuff, for example. Well, maybe, maybe that's a bad example, but it just depends what your goals are. I guess is what I'm saying is like, there's no right or wrong. And ultimately all anyone using or looking at your product cares about is the end result. They don't care how you got there. Like no one cares how you got there other than other less successful people who want to tell you, you did it wrong. But um, you know, but if you have personal goal to learn, then you probably want to build more stuff, right? Versus buying it. But if your but if your goal is like, no, it's actually really just about getting the idea and not about me like learning the perfect way to do this particular thing. Cause I'm going to move on and do totally different stuff. And then it makes sense. Like why waste your time reinventing the wheel? So I don't know. I guess that's how the lens I look through it as opposed to right or wrong. It's like, well, what are the goals? Is this the best way to meet that goal? And it is then great. If it's not, then don't do it. All right, so uh, let's hide this. So in this, um, let me show you this thing, this concept here. Uh, yeah, that is, uh, thank you. That is another um, piece that I did for the, um, the pilgrimage, that sort of uh, series I was showing earlier. Uh, so yeah, this, um, so these little pieces right here, these kind of overlays, what I'm going to do is, uh, I, I'm going to use those as a separate mesh and kind of drag them around. So one quick way to do that is to use the masking tools and then extract that to a new mesh. Uh, so, um, let me show you that. Let's try it out. Uh, so I'm going to, you know, and of course our look is a little different here, but let's just, then the concept, I mean, but, uh, just think about where I want to extract this stuff. So I want, I like, what if this was like, you know, piece of bark, if you will, another layer of bark right here, the back. So where I'm masking is what I'm going to extract. Uh, and then uh, maybe it comes around, kind of comes around here. And something like that, let's see. And we can do, you know, you can do this multiple times. So I'll invert, invert it. So that's the stuff right there I'm going to extract. And then I just remember how to have to remember how I extract because it's been a long time. I think it's under modified topology. Is that right? Or is it, did they move it? So it's just under, I say they move it. It's probably been in the same place forever, but I'm going to pretend like they moved it. It's under, is it subtool? Oh, it's right here, extract. Okay, 
So you can set the thickness um, and we'll see it in whether it's side. So we'll just do this at the default thickness. And that was rather thick. Um, let's, did I, what did that just do? There we go. All right. Uh, so um, I didn't accept it, so it went away because it was too thick. So let me just go down. Too much thick. Let's make this thinner. Still too thick. I'm actually doing the wrong attribute. So we want, let's do 0 0.005. This is again because my mesh is all screwy scale. There we go. So I'm going to accept that. So now let me get rid of our thing. So now what we have is we have this separate piece of mesh um, right there. And, you know, it's just a starting point, right? But it was much, you know, and if you think about like how much effort it is to kind of like carve that out, it's a really quick way to do that. And obviously, if you're doing a lot of hard surface stuff, it might be something, you know, you could use it to make pieces of armor and stuff like that as a starting point. But uh, we're going to just leave these on. But what I can do at this point is um, make sure my local symmetry is on. It is. So now I can sculpt on. If I actually go to the right level. Let me see if I get this. I can. Okay. Just making sure. So I can sculpt on that. But I could also at this point, you know, I can kind of smooth out because I'm not making like a. You could obviously sharpen these edges if you were doing something like armor, but I'm not. I'm just going to do this kind of like barky stuff. So, and I, I don't, what you could do, actually, I could show you this real quick. What you could do is you could crease this edge or you could polish this a lot before doing this sort of operation to try and re preserve some of that. I don't know that I want to, but just to um, geometry crease. Uh, and so they have a, a crease tolerance and a border and all. So if I just do a crease here, I think that means when I smooth it, you see if I it's, it maintains a little bit more of that, or maybe I didn't do it. Hold on a sec. Yeah, I should actually probably, yeah. You can see it's creased some of those edges a little bit. I, it's really nothing I care too much about for this. Um, but that would be where you'd, you'd uh, kind of do that sort of thing if you are going to do it. But I'm just going to use snake hook here and just kind of pull this around to get get some of that because I'm going to go ultimately I'm going for something a little more gestural with this and I just wanted to have a separate it won't be quite this day and night in terms of the separation it's just a good way to kind of get it started and I'll probably dynamesh this and everything else so It's interesting, I got a little cool separation right here, and I see if I keep smoothing that, I get more of that separation, and I kind of like that. It's just another happy accident. Uh, we'll keep it. We'll keep it. If I start pulling it in like that, I get some other cool blending going on just by the nature of the way these meshes intersect each other. And I could choose to, you know, um, at some point kind of bring this back in like I did earlier, or I could kind of leave it separate if I want a little bit more. Um, separation there at the end. Turn on Accu curve a bit. So I can just kind of get some tighter shapes in here. So that they're not going to stay these big softy sort of things. Put this in. So I'm going to try um, and work on this some during the week. We'll see if I'm, depends how my week goes. <laughs> I'm going to try my best so that next time um, we're maybe not doing as much sculpting since you guys have seen a bunch of that. And it'd be, it's going to be more of the same, right? Like there may be a few little different techniques here and there, but nothing too uh, dramatically different from this process. So we can um, still be in ZBrush, but maybe then go to detailing the surface. And so that uses a different techniques and then doing vert painting to get some color on there in preparation for then going into a render and then doing Photoshop painting. So I'd like to kind of move that along so you can see that without having to wait three months. <laughs> so uh, we'll, that's what I'm gonna try and do this week. 
I have to say try just because I'm not exactly sure how my week's going to go yet. But, uh, you know, stuff happens when you're working full time. Thank you, Rebecca. Thanks. And it is our time, so let me, I should probably stop working on this. Thank you for coming by, everyone. Let me just um, give you one more render here of all this. Yeah, man, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Hanging out. Uh, let's see, how are we doing here? If I do a, let's get a render maybe. I don't know, something like this. That's where we are. Not looking too bad. I think once we once we start getting some of those twisting vine shapes and stuff in there and some of the bone texture, I think it's going to look really good. Hopefully next time. So, cool. Thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of your Sunday. And uh, hopefully I'll see you next week. And, um, yeah, stay safe. It's still crazy out there. Cool. Thanks. Bye.